Thanks, Dave. Before we get into our Metro Last Light review, I think it's fair that we remind everyone it's pretty much a depression simulator, just like the last game. So we'll do what we can to lighten the mood throughout this review. OK, let's get sad, everyone, all the time. I remember so many random, unnecessary things, yet I don't remember the most important one. My mother's face. She died very soon after the war started. All that remains of her is that day in the gardens. How I wished I could recall her face. The way she looked at me. The way she whispered that I have nothing to fear. I'd sell my soul just to recall that. I'd do that any day, any time. Metro Last Light continues the story of Artyom and his struggle to survive beneath post-apocalyptic Moscow. The bombs went off around 20 years ago, leaving the surface uninhabitable and the metro tunnels are the last stand for the human race. Everyone is cold, hungry and diseases infesting the community. The world is full of decay topside, but out surviving the radiation isn't the biggest problem. There's bandit gangs, other city factions and even Nazis who are constantly causing unrest. This is an outrage! I told you to stay still! On top of all that, a whole host of mutated creatures are after you. What, kittens? Oh, kittens! Hey, oh, little guy. Kittens do Oh, that's cute. Cats. I thought we put some cats in to lighten the mood. Oh, great idea. Cats. Aww. The story revolves around the last of the Dark Ones, and Artyom has a strange connection to it. The last game was based on the book, but this one isn't based on its sequel. But apparently the developer has been working with the original writer. The dialogue is mostly quite interesting and well written and well voiced and there's some really dark themes this game deals with as well. Yeah, and it is an atmospheric and immersive world to be in, but like we said, it's super depressing all the time. I mean, even the loading screens need to cheer up a bit. Pavel's almost certainly going to hang. Who knows? What would have happened to me? As you wander the underground tunnels, every single character has some morbid and long tale of woe. In the past, trains were ordinary things. But now, this monorail seems magic, doesn't it? And Romanov's the only one who makes it there alive. Last time it was our neighbors. This time, it's us. It will be long before Fiora has this station to himself. But what do we do now? Oh, kitty cat. Oh, that's cute. Kitty cat? Oh, look at that. That's what gorgeous. You what you doing? He's so, so cute. Oh, what are you doing? He's so cute. What? what are you doing, cat? In fact, I'd argue that most of this game is designed to force you to watch all of these stories and pay attention to it. It's constantly slowing you down and taking control away from you. In fact, I'd say it actually redefines slow walking and makes it a feature. Well, we've worn this place out. Let's move. Yeah, even in the city areas and some other areas as well, you're dragged down to the pace of like an old man walking up some stairs. It's so frustrating from a gamer's perspective because you feel like there's always someone just holding your hand and pointing, going, look at this, look at this content we make. Be sad, sad, <laughs> sad. When are we going to go home? Soon, very soon. Every NPC walks so slowly too, so you're often waiting for them to catch up or finish their dialogue, and some won't mind this so much because it is mostly interesting subject matter and dialogue. The tombs of ancient kings were filled with whatever they might need in the afterlife. Weapons, gold, chariot. But just not being given the choice to be able to ignore it or move on a bit quicker, I mean, to me that verges on indulgent design. Yeah, I, I like it when stories try to be told around you, and it's good that they've tried that, but like you said, it, they're forcing you to. It kind of takes the magic away from observational narrative. Also, sometimes they put cobwebs up and you have to walk through cobwebs, slow you down even more, burn them away. And at one point, I actually got stuck between three NPCs all having a really sad conversation about someone whose husband had died, and I couldn't get out. I was trapped. No. No. Oh, just let me out. Oh. The good news is the action is thrilling. Weapons handle perfectly, and there's solid strategy in the weapons you pick, how much you customise them, and how you manage your reloads. There are times you'll need to switch between weapons quickly to fight off nasties rather than reload, and actually all the gunplay is satisfying. 
I especially like the quad barrel shotgun. You can never have too many barrels. No. There's a focus on stealth as well, and you'll enjoy taking out lights and sneaking about in the dark. This is a very forgiving mechanic, so I think they've softened it a little bit from the first game. Hey, what the Ammo is nice and scarce too, especially if you forget to buy some when you're in town, which I did all the time. But even fully stocked, you'll often cheer for joy when you come upon a convenient dead body with stacks of ammo. I didn't think the enemy AI was revolutionary, but I like the way that they react to your presence. Yeah, I like the way they took hits as well. Also, there's toxic air everywhere, and if you run out of filters for your mask, it's death. I love those masked sections, Bajo. Wiping the grit and dirt away from your face, rushing to the next section, the muffled breathing, I mean, it just adds so much to the atmosphere. There's a handful of confusing what do I switch or click moments that got me killed a few times, such as in this railcar section. I think they could have done a better job on direction in these toxic areas because you've got that time limit before your mask filter runs out and you die. <gasps> and at one point I got stuck at a checkpoint running out of air with no filters and every time I loaded the game I die within seconds. So I had to restart the entire chapter. <gasps> Yeah, I know why they've done it, though. It creates that sense of panic. I mean, those toxic sections are meant to be stressful, unfamiliar situations. You're not meant to be there and you're not meant to like it. Yeah, and they do pull that off. I, I did enjoy those sections up top, especially. It's a truly hostile environment. Yeah, it's great up top, especially later in the game when you're pursuing the Dark One while fighting off huge enemy platoons. There are some spectacular set pieces and excellent hallucination moments. played on console, and while the colour palette is quite washed out, visually it's still very interesting. You know, there's some nice areas of contrast, but it's still one of the brownest games we've played in a long time. Yes, I almost missed brown games, Hex. <laughs> Not quite, though. No. I like the amount of detail, and there are some slick effects here and there, such as in the fiery catacombs. One thing I was really disappointed with was the way women are represented in this game. And that stripper scene was just full on and pointless and, and just a bit gross. Yeah, it certainly wasn't sexy and it served no purpose to the narrative or the game. I'm getting a bit tired of those stripper scenes, to be honest, just sitting down and paying money to watch someone dance. Yeah, and point. I, I don't think I'm being prudish about it. I have no issue when a strip club is, is a setting for a particular scene to take place and there's some, you know, chicks in the background scantily clad or what have you, but having them like full on like grind up against you and they're naked with their boobs I mean, I just think that's unnecessary. So, would you like some more? Another thing I found a bit odd is that your character is so involved in what's going on and with so much of the dialogue, and yet he has no voice. And normally this isn't much of an issue, but it did make for some pretty strange interactions. Yeah, essentially, no one can talk to you unless they're asking you a question that is rhetorical. <laughs> Who goes there? Stand still or we shoot. We're armed. We are armed. Swear by Lenin's name. He doesn't look like a GB. I don't recognize the uniform. Could he be one of ours? I still think all the voice actors do a great job, though, at creating this atmosphere and this whole end of days vibe. Yeah, I think all in all, if you can put up with the slow pace of everything, it's definitely one of the more different linear shooters out there. And it reminds you what's so great about the likes of, of Fallout and Stalker. Mm. There is a lot to like here, especially those end of days hallucination flashback moments. And I tried so hard to get into this game, Hex. But at, at the end, I just felt like I'd had one good fight each hour, and the rest of the time I was just being dragged through this depressing dialogue, and, and, and all that control was taken away from me so much. But there are some truly exciting and unique moments in this game, and I didn't regret playing it, but I'm still going to give it 6 out of 10 kitten videos. <laughs> Well, I think even though all the characters seem to blend into each other towards the end, sitting down to Last Light felt like sitting down to a drink with an old comrade. Plus, the action really ramps up about seven hours in, so I'm giving it seven and a half. Kitten videos.